Yo, what's going on guys? So, we're back at it with another one of these neat videos. Now, today is a special day because we're going to be covering speciation. And I know this is something a lot of people want to cover it for a long time. And, well, we're finally here. So, let's get into it. Now, in the last video, the last videos first of all ran a little long. So, let's try to cut it down. But also in the last video, there was some mistake that we fixed with the uh, fitness and we set up the load and the save for the networks. So I pushed all that to get. You guys can pull from there or if you guys already have the code, you can follow along now. OK, before we get to the Unity side, let's just go into this a little bit and explain how the speciation will work. OK, and by this, I mean, let's go into the paper that uh stanley wrote um and let's see how it goes let me make sure i get this guy's name there we go kenneth o stanley and yeah he actually has a very good diagram that explains what's going to be happening and that's this one right here a very good image so when we're doing speciation now first of all it's very hard to discuss speciation without crossover so we're going to be at least covering the topic of both of them you know uh going over both of them but we're going to just cover speciation in this video and then the next one will be crossover so when we're doing speciation one of the key things we need to find is the speciation distance the speciation distance is the it's basically the marker that lets us know how far these two networks are from each other as in how similar one network is to the other network if networks are extremely similar then they're part of one species you know these uh, similar networks might have some differences but compared to all the other structures these ones are grouped together really this is like a clustering algorithm part of it but anyways what we do is we find the distance. Let me see what the exact name of this distance is. Compatibility distance. Okay. And sorry, you guys, I'm actually a little sick today. So uh, excuse any coughing and sneezing and stuff like that. But okay. So this compatibility distance or the speciation distance or whatever is uh, a distance. Well, let's just read it. Well, they don't really explain it very well here anyways well the compatibility distance is basically what i explained earlier it's how compatible one network is to another network if they're very compatible or in other words very similar they are part of the same species right and this is done by taking now let's go back to the graph right here this is done by taking one uh one network and comparing it to another network. Now, this diagram is for uh, crossover, but we can use this also to explain speciation a little bit. So instead of parent one, parent two, let's just call this network one, network two. It doesn't matter about parents. We're comparing this network to this network to see how similar the two are. Now, the way we do that is we look at the genome of the two networks. This right here is a simplified representation of, of the genome, specifically the connection genes within the genome, right? This is the map that represents your edge list, your connections, right? So for the first network we see, and this is how our structure is set up in our code as well, but for the first parent you see that from node 1 to node 4, there should be a connection. So input goes into node one, and then from node one, it gets pushed forward to node four. From node two to node four, right? But this lot, this edge is now disabled because it mutated. It had a node placed in between. This edge is disabled, and then the next one is three to four, which we see right here, two to five, which we see here, five to four, which we see here, and one to five, which you see from here to here. So just by the connection list 
we can basically get a full understanding of the structure. Now, we take the connection list that is present in the genome of the first uh, network and compare it to the second one, right? Which, in this case, in this example, the second one is a lot longer. Here's the comparison happening. And what we're comparing now, and what we need to find, is the number of disjoint edges and the number of access edges, okay? And this is uh, shown right here. Now, what is disjoint and access edges? I think right here is a really good explanation. So disjoint genes are the genes that do not match in the middle of the genome. So, for example, this genome only has one, two, three, four, five, six connections. This genome has a lot more. Um, nine. Okay. So we, but we see that the innovation numbers. Oh, also, actually, this thing is very important because it's heavily based on the innovation number. It's not just matching edges, but matching edges to the innovation numbers. Right? So this means that on the first innovation, they were the same. Second innovation, the same. Third innovation, the same. Fourth innovation, and each innovation is a new mutation, right? Fourth innovation, the same. Fifth innovation, something different happened, right? So five uh, on here is disabled, but five, five in parent two is disabled, but five in parent one is enabled. So that is a disjoint uh, gene. Then we see that this parent does not have a six, but this one does, right? Parent one or network one does not have six, but network two does. That is also a disjoint, uh, disjoint connection because we see that the maximum innovation uh, for the smallest parent, uh, the parent with the um, least amount of connections is eight, right? So any, th and the smallest one for uh, the other one is 10. So we take uh, out of the two parents, we take the smallest maximum uh, innovation number. So that would be eight in this case. And anything that's different up to eight is considered a disjoint gene. So it's a difference within the innovation, within the chain of innovation is disjoint. And then any innovation that happened past eight, so like nine and 10, is an access gene. There's no comparison that's going to happen to see if these two are similar or if uh, uh, if one is enabled or one is disabled, right? Or if the connections are the same. These genes are just extra from one of the parents. So the difference between disjoint is they are within the uh, one of the parents. Uh, they're within the innovation numbers that could be matched right? So like five could match to five, six could match to six, seven could match to seven, eight could match to eight if it existed, right? But since eight is the smallest number, anything above eight cannot match. There's just extra. So that is what access is. It's the extra at the edge that doesn't match to anything. And now when we're doing, uh, Speciation, when we're getting the compatibility distance, all we need is the count. How many disjoint and how many um, access. But for, uh, speci for a crossover, we need to take the disjoint connections, add them to the offspring from the most fit parent, and then we take the access from the most fit parent and add it down. I believe it's access from the most fit. Let me make sure. Yep. 
So the excess genes, those that do not match in the end, are inherited from the more fit parent. So whichever one is the stronger one, if he has uh, access genes, we add them. But if parent one is the stronger one and he has access genes, we do not add them. And for crossover, if let's say eight and there was an A here, right? And there were different connections, like it was one to seven, but this one was one to five, right? We would take the connection from the most fit parent. I uh, like, uh, they don't really show it here, which is kind of a shame. But if you read through, you, you'll you get you, these, anything that doesn't match, and actually it'll be right here. Those that do not match in the middle, we take the one that are, uh, we take the ones that are from the more fit ones. So if it doesn't match, we, the child will have the gene that is from the more fit parent. And that way we'll get closer and closer uh, finding our solution to the problem which is a fish that can chase food or capture food and live the longest all right so enough talking that's pretty much the explanation and you know as we code we'll see a little bit more but let's get into it let me open up the project All right, so now the project's open. Let's make sure everything is running fine. Press play. Yep, looks good. Everything is spawned from the save networks. Let me go to the genetic manager and spawn from save. Let me turn that off. Okay. And change the best time back down to 150. All right, that looks good. Now let's open up our scripts and get going oh also let me open up the time thing real quick so go to edit project settings and then in project settings you'll see this go down to time and here's your time scale so when you're simulating turn this up it'll speed up all right so all of our speciation stuff all of the uh well what we need now is a way to come up with a compatibility distance and figure out how many dis and the compatibility distance is gotten by figuring out how many uh, by figuring out how many access genes there are and how many disjoint genes there are. So the actual function is so E is access genes, D is number of disjoint genes. And then we have the average weight differences of matching genes. Including the disabled genes. So we're going through the weight and seeing what the average uh, difference is. All right. And every, so it's some constant multiplied by the number of access genes divided by the number of nodes. And capital N is usually the number of of nodes so the number of genes in the larger genome is n and if it's less than 20 you can just set it to one it doesn't matter but all right interesting stuff interesting stuff and then c3 times the average weight difference right right let me take a look okay so let's get into the code let's open up our neat utilities because that's what's going to house all of our kind of functions for to get the compatibility distance and let me open up uh my reference code real quick
all right so let's come up with so what we're going to do is write our functions for the compatibility distance and everything in our neat utilities but then we're going to create another class that represents a new species so anytime a new species gets created we will instantiate that class and that class will hold a list of all the networks that belong to that species So uh, the function we're going to start with is, I don't know if I want to start with the average weight difference or if we should just go into the compat, eh, we'll go into the compatibility difference, start with that. So to start off with, we're going to do the, get a function that lets us know how many disjoint and access genes there are. So let's first of all comment this right here. Uh, stuff for save and load. All right, just so I know all my uh, stuff for compatibility distance. Good to go. All right. Um, give me one second. Let me just close my door. All right, so it's going to be public static int, and it's going to be returning. Uh, I have it returning an int, but it's really going to be returning two values one for the number of disjoint and one for the number of access. Right? It's just in a uh, array form. So we're going to call it get disjoint and access all right and what we're going to pass it we can now do this in two different ways we can pass in a list we could pass in the genome itself and get the list of connection genes within this function or something that's a lot simpler is we could just pass in the uh, connection gene list that's within the uh, genome class we don't need to actually pass the whole genome we could just get the connections list that's within the genome so let's do that so it's going to be a list of con gene and first cons so these are the connections of the first uh, genome we have. And then list con gene second man. Second con. There we go. Our second cons. And then we're also going to pass in. Actually, yeah, I think that well, good for now. And then we might have to add more, uh, two more variables here, but we'll see as we go along. So now we got that. Now we need three integers. Let's see if this lets me this way. All right, so we have three integers and this one is first of all is this is the first count so the number of disjoint starting off at zero because we don't know and then the second one is access starting off at zero because we don't know and then well oh, this should be break point okay break point is the point that lets us know when the access is or when the um disjoint is so the break point is right here for this one where the disjoint and the access you know break all right let's get going so one thing we need to start off is we need to get the highest innovation number of the first parent 
and then the second. Now the way we can do that is we can just loop through right here. Or we could pass it in. Hmm. Let's just loop through right here and see how it goes. Okay. So to get the we're going to want another int and we're going to call it first genome end. So this is the end of the uh, connection list which should have the largest innovation number. And then we're going to do another one called in second genome end. And so we sh this should be we should be able to set this to the end of the first connections uh, array. So first cons, and then we want to get the end of it is going which is going to be first cons dot count. I believe it's count and C. I always get mixed up. C sharp count. Length of list. The count function. So it's going to be first cons count, but it's going to be minus one because the count is going to be one above what it actually is. So if let's say the count is one, well, our index will be zero. Our index is one behind the count. Okay, and then this dot eno number so we want to get the innovation number of the last gene there which should be the latest innovation there's no way a new innovation gets added in the middle okay and then the second cons second cons dot count minus one dot eno num all right, now I want to print this, which and this is just print first genome end, and then second genome end. All right, but we won't be able to actually print this uh, until we call this function. So we're going to call this function. Let me just open this real quick. So. We're going to call the uh, function. Oh my God, what just happened? This is all the stuff we had open from before. So let me just X to where we were. All right. We're going to call this function in our neat G manager in the same place that we called the uh, BCation. Right, in the same place we called the save before to test it. I think it was in the sort population. But when we start from best, we don't sort the population, which is fine. That's just going to be one generation. I just want this to print anyways, just to test. So over here, we're going to do neat utilities up in the, uh, we'll go to neat G manager, the sort population function. So neat utilities dot, it is going to be get disjoint access and what we're going to be passing it is the best uh networks uh connection genes so that will be all networks and after it's sorted the best network is going to be at the front of the list on the network dot my genome dot con genes that should send the list that should be the list, hopefully. And then the second one we're going to compare it to is the second fittest. There we go. Let's see all the errors we're going to get. Uh, 
All right, I got that. So let's go back to our neat utilities here. We need to return something since we have uh, this declared right here. So let's just return null and see if that will work for us. If it doesn't, I'll pass in an empty. Perfect, good to go. And then here, let's instead of that, do an add. I don't know if the add automatically adds space and stuff, like it does in Python. All right, so that should be good. These are just warnings, and we're on our way. Index without rate must be non-negative or less size. Would make sense if we have zero and we go minus one, then it's just cannot exist. Hmm. All right. So if it's zero, then yeah, I don't know what happens in this if there it simply doesn't have anything. Assume it will just be zero for the access breakpoint and we pass on through. So let's do an if right here. First cons dot count equals equals zero or second cons dot count equals equals zero. Then we're going to want to do all this stuff. this all right also i i will be copying and pasting so i hope you guys are able to keep up with that like i don't think it's going to be too difficult for you guys to see when i'm moving things around i hope it's not anyways if it does become a problem or something and you guys want to see this again but in a very simplified way i'm happy to redo this in a tutorial format that makes it a lot easier for you guys to go through this. <laughs> if it's in a tutorial format, then I won't be figuring things out as I go along. I'll simply have everything laid out with a script to follow. Um, the reason why I haven't done it is because I haven't seen that much interest for that in these videos to justify the amount of effort it would take. Anyways, let's get started on this again. That play. And while that goes, I'm gonna check something out in this reference code. All right, same issue with the non-negative index. Oh, yeah, well. It should only happen if it does not equal zero. And... Does not equal zero. That's when this should fire. I had it reversed. Let's restart that. So here we get two, <laughs> which is actually one plus one. That's what it's doing. So what I'm going to do is add a string right here and add that. Maybe that will do it. 
Let's up the time to five or six. A one and one. Let's let this run for a bit. See if it goes up. Three and two, that means more connections and stuff were added. I want to let this run for a bit to see how high the best ones get. The four and five, we're getting up. Alright, it, it is looking good. All right. Now that we have the biggest innovation from each of these, I'm just trying to think, is there any way, any chance that the last gene would have the wrong innovation <coughs> meaning that could there be a 10 in front of an 8 but if that's the case that ruins the whole algorithm so I, I it just cannot happen unless we do a mutation instead of disabling edges we are removing edges altogether so let me look at my Mutations and I've, I've tried that in a different version of neat that I was messing around with Meh, Disabling is good enough. There's no reason to Remove uh, nodes uh, remove edges and when you do remove edges you lose that innovation chain But there's a better method to do similarity and find a compatibility distance for neural networks so uh, in the future, I'd want to use that for the speciation instead of this compatibility distance. But that's... Uh, I'm talking too much. Huh? Give it too much away. Now that we know we're getting that, uh, the biggest innovation numbers within these, we can go ahead and get started on writing our if statement to see where our breakpoint should be. So if first genome end is bigger than bigger than or equal to second genome end, so it's going to be bigger than if our first genome is bigger than our second genome then our breakpoint is going to equal second genome end because we take the smaller one and then it, else if our second genome is larger than our first genome end we're going to set the breakpoint equal to the first genome end and then if they're the same if first genome end and second genome end are the same, then we set the access. Well, the access remains zero, right? Wait, let me just fix this else. There we go. Mm, there we go. Okay. So we have now three uh, checks. If the first genome is bigger than the second genome, then our breakpoint is set to the second genome, the smaller one. If our second genome is bigger than our first genome, then our breakpoint is set to the first genome, the smaller one. But if they're both the same, we want to leave access to be zero, and our breakpoint is, well, it could be either one. So you could take, they're both the same, so it doesn't matter. So our breakpoint. equals first genome end so we could set this one to be whatever with first or second because they should be the same right um, and also if we wanted to we could just do this as well and not have this 
right? So if they're equal to each other, actually, that's what we should. Let's do it that way. If they're equal to each other, you know, our breakpoint should be. It doesn't. It doesn't matter if it's first or second. But if the second one is bigger, then it should be the. Uh, if the first one is bigger, then it should be the second one. It should be the smaller value. Okay. <coughs> oh, sorry. Excuse me. All right. That should be good. And to make sure we're going to do another print. And this time I want to print a couple of things, right? I want to first of all print the breakpoint. Oh, that's why I'm getting it wrong. I spelt it wrong. Let me fix that. Breakpoint. Okay. So breakpoint. And then we want to also, you know, first genome and to make sure our breakpoint is picking the biggest, uh, the smallest out of the two. Right, but I also want to print something else, which is the count of the first cons dot and the second. Yeah, should be good. Let's print those and this will kind of let us know if we're on the right track. Where? Oh, right here. I'll just let it run for a bit so we can get some good data. Okay, now let's see what's going on real quick. So the, our breakpoint is set on one. Our first and second is one to one. And our count for both of them is also one one. So everything is looking good. Everything is looking good here. Over here we see that our first con has one innovation. Our second con's biggest innovation number is two. So we pick one as our breakpoint. That's correct. And then we have one and two. Well, our second one's length is two. That's why we have two innovations. That makes sense. I want to check this one real quick. Yep, two, five, two, five. That's matching. That's good. Yeah, everything seems to be matching good. So, yeah, perfect. On the right track. Now that we have our breakpoint, we need to begin to do our count. For that, actually, we're going to re need to write another function because I don't want to have to keep writing multiple long loops in this one function. So we're going to create a new function called as innovation. And this function will let us know whether the uh, list of genomes has the innovation or not. Private static. So we're going to return true or false has eno. And what we're going to pass it is a list of con gene connections and an int search. You know, this is the innovation number that we're checking to see whether we're checking to see whether this connection list has this innovation number. OK, 
Okay, and then so we're going to do four each. Con gene. Con in connections. So I'll loop through the connections array. Or connections list. And we're simply going to do an if statement if con dot enov num equals equals search enov. We're going to return true. Now we could do another trick with checking the sizing and stuff like that, but this is cleaner if in the future we are removing edges and nodes and stuff like that. <coughs> Turn true, otherwise we return false. Okay, so if the innovation exists in the list, we return it as true, or if it doesn't, we give it as false. And good to go. Now over here, within our if statement, we're going to write a function. Which is going to be We're going to loop through our uh we're going to loop through our first connections. We're yeah, we're gonna loop through our first connections. So for each con gene in first cons if con dot has if, con if the connection's innovation number is less than the breaking point, man, I'm having an issue spelling break today. I was right the first time. Oh my god. I hate this. I hate spelling and English. It's not my first language. I don't hate it. I love it. But come on. There's some things don't make sense. Anyways. I'm going to change this back to what it was. Which is break point. <coughs> okay, so. Just change it in these places wherever it was. And now so if the connection dot innovation number is less than the breakpoint, then we have to check if it's a disjoint or not a disjoint. And we do that, we're going to use some nice uh if statements. So if we do that, we're going to do disjoint plus equals. We want to add and what we're going to do is an if statement of if this has enov. And we're going to check if second cons has the connection dot enov number. So we want to see if the second connections has the innovation number of the connection we're looking at that is a part of the first connections. <laughs> I know that's a little confusing, I'm sorry. So we want to see if it has this. And then if it does or doesn't, we're going to do a question mark. So we're going to return zero if it doesn't and one if it does. And that will add, so basically what this is saying is if it does have it, but it's within the breakpoint, we're going to pass in a zero. And if it doesn't, I mean, we're going to pass, if it does have it, then we're going to pass in a one because it's a disjoint and that one is going to get added to our disjoint. So anytime this happens, it's going to be like one, two, three, if we keep getting trues. But if it's a false, we give a zero, so we add a zero, and it doesn't affect our total at all, so that's perfect. And then we're going to do else. And 
and we set up the stuff for access, which is now this is going to be if the connection is less than, but if it's equal, I think the breakpoint should also be included. It should be less than or equal to the breakpoint. Yeah. But and then if there's um if it is bigger and then if it's bigger than the breakpoint we also do the same check. And well this one we're going to change in a little bit. This one is going to also have to check to make sure of each connection uh of the uh connection uh direction the edge itself so we're gonna have to look to see if the input node and the output node are also matching when has innovation is true so we'll get to that one but this right now this is the access will stay as this for the access we're just seeing that if it, the breakpoint is bigger we want to see if the connection exists in the second cons and if it doesn't Oh, something's backwards here. Hold up, hold up. For this one, if it has it, it should be the opposite. These should be the ones that don't exist. So the zeros and ones need to be switched. Hmm, interesting. <sighs> First of all, this is checking to see if it has the innovation, right? And if it doesn't have that innovation, we're going to do something different. We're going to change this real quick. We're going to break that. Actually, completely comment out all of this. I'm commenting out with control uh, the question mark key and it uh, comments it out. We're going to do a print and we're going to print this real quick. <laughs> what I want to see is all right, I got it. I don't remember this real quick. Okay. Print true print false. But then we also want to print this value. make sure that this is uh we're actually getting the right true matching with the right true
Mm. Gonna move that within this. And uncomment all. Uh. First, uncomment all this. And then copy this over within. And then comment all this out for now. Save that. Let's run it. Uh, of course. This above then. There we go. What is this? Oh, I can't print true. So I want to pass it true. And I want to pass it false. And then I want to print overall. There we go. That hopefully should be it. And this is all just to test the way this is, uh, the if statement is working. True, true. That's good. True, true. Yeah, it's working fine. So that's cool. Get rid of those prints. Go ahead. And whenever you guys see me putting prints in, that's just me debugging. You guys want to follow along with that all the time. But okay. So this is basically saying if it's true, pass in zero. If it's false, pass in one. Yep. So true would be zero, false would be one, right? But is that the case? This is right though. So we, if they're not, if there, it doesn't exist at the end, then obviously we need to add in that it's an access and it's an access. But this, we need to first account for the edges. Sorry, just hit my mic. We need to account for the edges. And we need to see if the, I believe we need to see if the innovation number is here we're seeing that if the innovation number is the same, then well, we don't see that case. That's the issue with this. what happens. Okay, these two innovation numbers are different. Well, obviously they're disjoint, right? They're within the breaking point, but the innovation these two are the same, but they're still considered disjoint. Why? Oh, they're not here. So innovation six is there, but it's not in parent one. So there you go. There you go. Even though this is like so weirdly not possible because of the way we have our mutation happening we'll never have in a, like in between innovation until we get rid of edges altogether but all right that's fine for now we'll keep it this way and then i'll add in the check later on for the um edges but for now this is going to work just fine as well basically anytime we see that the in the distant uh the it doesn't have the innovation number we just add a zero but uh, we'll also add another check for the edges okay now we do the same thing for the second uh connections so for each con gene con in second cons 
We do the same, same thing, except we flip it. So if con dot enov number is less than, first of all, yeah, okay, less than or equal to break point, then disjoint plus equals has enov first cons and then con dot enov number question mark zero colon one semicolon <laughs> hopefully those are right names here okay else access plus equals as you know first cons conda you know number question mark zero colon one there we go all right and now that we have these two we can return the values We want to create that array we're going to return disjoint and access equals is going to be disjoint comma access and then we return disjoint and access so we're just going to return this function right here, uh, this variable right here, okay? And that's our disjoint and access uh, values, but we need to, it, our disjoint is not right. We need to write a new function for the, our dis, to get our disjoint. It's similar to this, but we have to also check for the connections if the innovation numbers are the same. So if, the, if it has an innovation number, these two, then we want to make sure that the connection are the same. Then we can say that those aren't disjoint. But if the connections are not the same, then we can say that they are disjoint. So for that, we're going to write another function. Private static, and it's going to return an integer. Uh, is disjoint okay and for is disjoint we need this and this so we need basically the same thing as our, our the function right underneath con gene connections int comp you know because this is the innovation we're comparing <coughs> Perfect. so let's do this now we hmm, how are we going to first of all if has enov we have to check for the innovation so connections comp enov so if it's true it does have the enov then we need to see if the so if it's false we automatically return one because we know that that's disjoint it doesn't exist but if it does exist so if it's true we are going to check if Comp, ooh, okay, okay. We're going to have to pass in the second cons as well, or at least the innovation, specific innovation that we're checking. We get, 
We have that here. Yeah, we're gonna have to. That's not going to work very easy. I just think about how I'm going to do this because this is also one of the issues that was in the source code. This, so the, I'm going. This is off scratch. We're going to call this comp connections and the innovation. And then we're also going to do a list of congeno congenes. This is going to be our parent cons. Uh, so what I want is the these are going to be the connections from the first let's just call it let's just from the connections that are being compared and this is from the one that gives us the innovation number we're going to call this parent and we call this base cons yeah that's good that's good these are the base connections that we get the uh, comp innovation from and these are the ones we're comparing it to so we're going to do an if statement and we want to see first of all if half genomes is true then we want to see if comp cons Oh, that's rough. That is rough. We're going to have to loop through now. For each. It would have been so much easier if there was a simple way to just find the one that has the innovation number. But obviously nothing is easy. So we're going to have to set up two variables. One is... So con gene, they're both going to be of type con gene. So comp con, uh, yeah, and then con gene base con, and then for each comp cons. In con in comp cons, we want a if connection the enov equals equals comp con. Okay. So we're basically seeing if the when we're looping through of the com cons if the innovation number so it should be in of number equals equals the comparison you know then we want to take that uh gene and that's where we'll find the edge information so that'll be comp con equals And we want to do the same thing for the base connection. Oh, and then after we uh, we find the uh, connection, we want to break out of the loop because there's no reason to loop through everything. <coughs> this will save us some speed. And so base cons want to do the same thing if con dot enov number equals equals comp enov these could be in different positions but their uh but their innovation number could be the same that's why we can't use it as an index but we have to actually find it based on the innovation number
and that will be base con equals connection break. We find the two, uh, uh, the two uh, connections we want to compare, and now we do if. If com con dot input node equals equals base con dot input node or if com con dot input node equals equals base node dot input node and And comp con the output node equals equals base con the output node. So this will mean that they are the same connection, which means that it's not disjoint. Which means that we should return false, right? No, return. If it's not disjoint, we return zero. So it has the same innovation number. The input node and the output nodes are the same. Let's go back to our paper. So the same innovation number. The input node and the output node are the same, meaning they are not that we don't add to <laughs> this joint <sighs> so we return a zero right else it is disjoint if one of them even if if input node does not equal the output node or if uh you know any of the if the comp cons input node does not equal the base con input node, if the comp con output node does not equal the base con output node, if either of those cases happens, it's a disjoint gene. So we return one to be added to the uh, disjoint count. And then obviously, if it doesn't have the innovation number, then it is disjoint. Perfect. And that way, wherever we have, we could just right here, we could just pass in. First of all, we don't need this anymore. There, and then we could just change this to is disjoint. And then we're going to also pass it first cons. Okay. And then here, we're going to do the same thing. It's disjoint first, but we're going to also pass in the second cons. And we'll get rid of all this stuff in the back. There we go. Now we are actually done with our compatibility distance stuff and let's get rid of this from in here the thing is though <laughs> there's always something right we shouldn't have to have this if statement in here basically what I'm saying is if the count like let's say the counts are not zero of both of them but there are of one of them. That one should be, you know, zero. And the other one should still have its uh, innovations, disjoint, all that there. So we could come up with a proper distance between the two. It's an interesting problem. And I think we can solve it by doing a loop. through these first connections and getting the latest innovation number instead of having to rely on the um, 
on this. However, let's do this instead. And this, I think, is going to work just fine. We'll cut this out and put that right here. Right? So if first constant count does not equal zero, and then we can get the latest innovation number. But if it does equal zero, then we can set uh, first genome n to be zero. And in fact, we'll separate. First of all, let me just fix this up right here. There we go. We'll separate this real quick. We'll separate this into its own if statement and remove all this right here. This is for the first connection. And then we wanna add the same thing for the second. We can just paste what we just cut. We wanna add the second half of that. There we go. And go ahead and break that in. So what we'll do is by default have it have both to be zero equals zero and second genome and equals zero. And if they don't if they are <coughs> if the count is greater than zero, then we can change it to what it should be, otherwise it remains zero for the first genome. And since it's zero, I mean obviously the um, whichever one gets bigger will have this access, disjoint, all that beautiful stuff. And actually, everything will come up as access for whichever one is greater than zero compared to the one that is zero. So this will work perfectly, hopefully. And so now that we have everything and our return is working well, let's do a print. I want to print this number and see if we're getting something <coughs> right all these errors <clears throat> and that's something to return Oh, maybe it's also this. Oh, a lot of it. Okay, well, we're going to do this old school style of just commenting things out until things. Seems like something broke right here. So I'm good here. I'm good on my if. And for some reason, this if just cannot do it. Ah, I missed a. There we go. All right, now. <laughs> okay, and now we just have an issue over here. First of all, I'm going to change this back to what it was, even though I think both ways will work. Oh. So all the con genes that I had over here could all be capital. Wait. Yeah.
this. Right here, it is con gene instead of con gene. Okay, that's con gene W, which is just con gene. Lord, Use of there. we just so stuff. So, uh, bring those down. I think what you have to do for the uh, assigning it that way is put zero comma zero comma zero. But <coughs> you can just do it this way. <coughs> Sorry about that. All right. So that is sixty nine twenty. Down to Connections. Yep, I never changed that back to what it should be, which is comp cons. This should actually be called base eno because it act belongs to this. But whatever for now. See how many times I mentioned it. I'm gonna change this name real quick to base eno. Copy that. Com cons right here. We can just replace it wherever it says comp you know, right there, right there, and right there. Line 69, line 75, and line 84. Save that. Let's see how that's looking. Okay. Now, what do we have here? It's This one's on line 90. Comp con, which is right here. Use of unassigned local variable. It has to have it and can't not have it because we check with has innovation. Does it. Hmm. Let's do a print. Found one print Found two can't even run it because my errors. Uh, equals no. Equals. 
tools. No. So I have it set to something to start off with. Yeah, so then when it runs, <laughs> it'll find it. Okay. This guy is not getting edit project settings or project settings. There we go. At least everything we know it's working, right? So all those uh errors down there were fixed. Now we have to do disjoint access. We're going to do zero here and then disjoint and access one here so we can print out and see what's going on. How does not exist of current content? Change this back to array. Okay. Oh, shouldn't be being plus that plus. There we go. thing right here because this should be this and the space hmm <laughs> But when we printed earlier, when we printed earlier, it said it was a integer. It had the array. That's fine. Let's print it when we return it. So we go to neat G Manager right here. We do int okay so we're going to int array blah equals this and we're going to print it And go to our neat tools and get rid of this. All right. So yeah, we print the founds and we got two zero, uh, four zero. It's letting us know what our disjoint and our access are. So our disjoint is first, then our access is second. Now, this seems a little excessive to have 10 and 4 already. Hmm. Uh, it's doing it twice with the way we have this set up. Everything is happening twice 
we don't need the second one at all actually so let's comment this out leave it like this because our access is already being figured out right here and our disjoint is already figured out right here we don't need to do it again doubling okay but let me first of all get rid of those found statements these because clearly it's working but i do want to print something else it's going to be right here i'm going to print the count so first const dot count just to make sure everything is working fine uh plus two, second cons dot count and plus count okay so we know that this one is the counts and those, the other one is the Well, this one is the count one and the other one. Is the one for disjoint and access. Why am I missing? Uh, print some. Back. Where? one <coughs> as you guys can tell I'm pretty sick How is that happening? <laughs> it works fine if I retype it, but if I, <laughs> okay, that's fine. I must, uh, I must be going crazy. All right. Now we don't know which one is the count. All right, cool. This is actually pretty cool. So over here, we see the count is one and one, right? And this is probably the first two networks that are being compared. And we see that the access and the disjoint is zero, zero. Chances are because that both of them have one connection and the one connection that was created has the same, it's the same connection edge to edge. Um, and there's no access and there's nothing different inside so there's no disjoint no nothing there's similar networks but over here we see the count is two and one so we have one axis which is for the two that makes sense and then we also have one disjoint which is probably for the one that's inside now over here we see that the biggest one is three so that carries over and for access we should only have one so it's you know, four minus three, and we have one right there. So it seems to be working pretty nicely, actually. And that's exactly what we want. And so from this, we have our two. Um, let's open back up our this. Now we have our um, access, the number of access connections, and we have the number of disjoint connections. Now all we have to do is create our function for our average 
weight difference. And then we have our compatibility distance and our speciation is basically done. We just have to implement the colors in uh, neat. So I think this is a good little uh, place for me to take a break. I'm going to stop recording here, take a little break, and we'll continue this in the next one.